Good evening, I'm Ed Cushman, television producer and instructor here at Community Cable Television Channel 34. This evening I'd like to show you a program entitled The Unilaya Story, A Day at Camp. And this is told through the eyes of a youngster who is about to go to camp but isn't quite sure if he's going to like it. As it turns out, well, I'll save that for you to find out in just a bit. The camp is located about 60 miles north of the Green Bay, Wisconsin area up in the Nicolay National Forest and is a perfect setting for uh, youngsters to spend a week or two in the summer. A Day at Camp, the Unalaya Story. Matthew, you'd better hurry, dear. The bus leaves at 1 o'clock. Maybe I shouldn't go. I'll miss my TV programs. This looks wonderful, Matt. I think you'll have more fun up at camp than here at home. We'll miss you, dear, but we'll see you at the end of the week. Now, Grandma's going to take you to the bus, and I'm going to go to work. Okay, see you later. Okay, bye-bye. Goodness, there sure is a lot of excitement around here today, isn't there? Yeah. Now you have a good time. Mom's going to record the beaver for you on tape so you can see all the programs you've missed. Okay, well, let's go. Going to summer camp is probably one of the most exciting things that can happen to a kid in the summer. I wasn't so sure I wanted to go, it was all new to me. But when I met some kids from my school, I started to feel a lot better about this trip. Yep. You have a good time. Yep. See bye. Next week. Next week. Have fun. Bye bye. On a cold, cloudy day in July 1937, 31 boys hiked from the Bonita Junction Railroad stop through the woods to a small clearing at Chute Pond. Over the years, many dedicated directors, laymen, and friends developed a camp that served thousands of boys and girls. They gave it the name Unalaya. With the help of the staff and counselors, Matt was about to learn the meaning of this name, Place of Friends. Up at camp, the staff was busy getting ready for our arrival. Most of us kids felt the dining hall was the most important building at camp. The time we spent there was very good. Over the years, the camp has had many directors, but Mike Graper was my favorite. The camp director's job is an important one. He keeps things running smoothly. Well, 500 on their way. Ah, sure. <laughs> about, uh, about 150. Okay. That looks like it ought to be enough to feed all of them. <laughs> Mike was sort of like a father to us while we were at camp. He was always around when we needed him. The cooks did a good job, too. They seemed to know how to make the things we kids liked and the food that was good for us, too. Camp Unilai is located on a quiet bay of Chute Pond, located about 60 miles north of Green Bay. It's right in the Nicolay Forest with trees everywhere. The lodge is really neat. It was built right into a hillside. It was always cool inside in the summer. The counselors were meeting in there, planning for our arrival. Each counselor had a group of five or six campers. They also worked in other areas like sports and games, crafts, waterfront, and nature study. They had a way of making us kids feel important and good about ourselves. Chris was the program director. Um, okay, the bus will be coming any minute. We've got a big group. We've got two big buses and one little bus, and the luggage for one of them will be uh, in the little in the trailer. I think that's probably going to the girls' side of camp. The camp had a full-time nurse on staff that was always available to take care of any health problems. 
There are 16 cabins located throughout the campgrounds. They are all heated in the winter and some have fireplaces. The camp is in operation all year round. Down at the waterfront, Chris introduced us to the staff and counselors, then called off our names by cabin groups. Jeremy, John, McCaffrey. Soon it was off to the cabin that was to be our home at camp. The first thing we did was a swim test. Three, go! Most of the kids already knew how to swim and could later do neat things like go for long distance swims out to the island and back. Those who needed more practice could work with the instructors every day and become better swimmers. The water was really super. Shoe Pond covers about 700 acres, so there's plenty of room to have all kinds of water fun. Before dinner, we toured the camp and then had free time to explore and catch frogs. the bell tells us that it's time for our first meal at camp. Let's go eat. Okay. That night we had everyone's favorite pizza. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I hate mushrooms. Come on, Matt, you gotta try them at least once. Only once? Well, maybe a little more. Try it, you'll like it. When a camper did something special, they were allowed to kiss the moose. Yuck. In one corner of the dining hall, I found many displays that were made by campers who went on Norwester trips. These 16, 17 year olds went out to the Rocky Mountains where they hiked, climbed, and lived out on the trail. It was always a big event when they returned to camp and told of their adventures in the wilderness. Norwester trips gave the campers many opportunities to share responsibilities and to learn to live and work with others. After dinner, we all assembled in the lodge for fun and songs around the campfire in the lodge.
Our cabin group was a lot like a big family with Carl, our father. Before going to bed, we got together for a talk. Hey guys, we're going to be living here together now for about a week. And it's kind of a small place to live, so we got to all kind of hang loose and respect each other's needs and little desires. That means around midnight, if I want to sleep, you guys got to be quiet. And the same thing with everybody else, you know, don't bother people when they're trying to sleep or do something. Um, big words, respect for everything up here. Not just other people, but the woods and the animals and the little frogs you guys pick up and throw around. Hey guys, 10 o'clock, lights up. In the morning, each cabin took turns raising the flag as many campers have over the years. After breakfast, each cabin had a camp chore like spreading wood chips in front of the lodge, picking up litter, breaking the sand down on the beach, or cleaning up a sink. It was a lot of fun working together, and it showed that we were responsible for our surroundings. After camp chores and cabin cleanup, we were ready to decide on our first activity of the morning. Okay, so what do you guys want to do today? Doing. Yeah. Archery. Swimming. Yeah, let's do archery. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sounds good. Let's go. Carl was good at archery and showed those of us that hadn't used a bow before how to shoot. There sure were lots of activities for us. The cabin counselors and us really got along well together. They helped us to learn a lot of new skills. About half of the day's activities were done as a group, and the rest of the time we were on our own. The Athabasca House is where we worked on craft projects and got outfitted for trips away from camp. The food eaten and the camping gear used was checked out here. The Indians, campers aged 7 to 10, often went on one or two overnight trips. Pioneers ages 11 and 12 went on three to five day trips, and the voyagers often took one or two overnight trips, and sometimes even went five to seven day trips on rivers like the Brule, Michigami, or Wisconsin. These kids were getting ready to go up to the Porcupine Mountains. It was the experience of a lifetime. Over on the other side, the girls were learning how to work with glass beads. The Indian groups learned a lot about American lore, home building, totem poles, wild edibles, and, and natural dyes. They could even learn how to make a candle that would burn. There were crafts to interest most everyone. We all liked the rope swing. With help from a staff member, we would grab the rope and go for it. Unilai offers 6 and 12 day sessions. This gave us plenty of time to practice and make use of our canoeing skills around the lake and on extended trips away from camp. The instructors taught us all about boating safety and how to use a canoe and paddle. We learned the right way to get in and what to do when we fell out. Learning how to turn over a canoe when it was swapped was very important. It was a lot of fun too.
We played a lot of games at camp, but I think soccer was my favorite. This year we had a real expert to teach us. My name is Sigi. I'm from Spain. I'm the students counselor now this year at Camp Unalaya. And I'm having so much fun here. Um, I think it's a very good experience for me and for the kids to have a, as a foreign counselor this year here because maybe they will learn anything else about Spain or other countries, other cultures, and they gave them more, more skills about other countries and they will learn a lot. And so I'm trying to introduce new games and, and new things about Spain so they can have an idea, a close idea about what, what's Europe, what's Spain, and how do they live in other countries. In addition to having fun, we also learned about the world around us. Jerry talked about the importance of trees. So, so we've decided that this tree was about 97 years old by counting the, each of the rings inside of it. This, when a tree gets to be this large and is cut, it's called saw timber. And this is the types of, uh, the size of trees that they use for making two by fours and things like that for building the house. When they harvest the trees when they're smaller, if, if it only would have been about this size, that's the size tree that they use when they make uh, tissue, like toilet paper and, and uh, paper napkins and things like that. Outdoor education programs are in session all year long. There's winter survival and cross-country skiing, bike rides in the fall and pond skimming in the spring. There's animal calling and night hikes. Schools plan their own programs with the camp director. We learned how important it is to take care of our environment. Across from the new lodge, kids practice rock climbing from the top of the old fireplace where the lodge used to be. The area surrounding the camp has many granite outcroppings that are great for geology study and climbing. I saw how important it can be to depend on others you climb with. Okay, now what I want you to do, I want you just to swing back a little bit. Okay, feel like holding me up kind of? Okay. Let go. Just with this hand. Let this hand up a little more. There you go. More in front of you. Just like that. Now kick off. So let's kick off the wall. Now push off. Push off and hang on, hang on. Come back to the wall. There you go. Push off. All right, hang on. Come back to the ball. All right, good job. We're ready to go. from the dining hall is the entrance to the Backwoods Campground. Here kids age 10 to 12 can take a step back into the early days of living in the Wisconsin frontier. Two of the old original cabins were moved back and were joined together. Campers lived here with no electricity or running water and cook at least one meal a day out here. The inside of the cabins are furnished much like they were in the old days, with tin cups and plates. A lot of cooking was done here in big pots over an open fire. The campers were able to try many of the crafts of the pioneers, such as candle and soap making, butter making, weaving, gardening, cutting and splitting firewood, and even tanning hides. It's a neat experience that we'd never have back home in the city. This log cabin was constructed of logs by campers just like the pioneers did in Wisconsin long ago. This was a special day. After lunch, canoes were loaded onto a trailer to get ready for a trip that was to be taken by a group of Voyager campers. They were about to spend five days canoeing on the Blue River. They carried all their supplies with them in their canoes and camped out at night, just like the explorers did in the early days of Wisconsin. I think I'd like to try this next year.
The little red cabin in the woods had some special technology inside for those who were interested. A camper could sign up to work the computers here every day. Okay, guys, the program that we are in here is one that's going to teach us how to be able to operate a computer such as this. It functions under the basic language, which means that you will be able to actually use English words in order to be able to com communicate with the computer. I think it's neat how camping in the woods can be combined with new technology. Voyager campers, ages 13 and 14, can learn the history of the French-Canadian pioneers. Best of all, they can take trips in the big 26-foot Voyager canoe, everybody paddling together with precision teamwork. Myself and some other guys in our cabin decided to practice our canoeing skills. I wanted to be ready for a river trip next year when I'd be a Voyager. Out on the lake, we came across some of the guys from the next cabin who were in a sailboat. Camp Unalaya has several kinds of sailboats and catamarans for us to use. We could choose to take sailing lessons every afternoon. Last, my favorite time of the day, swimming. waterfront director. She and the staff were always standing by in the docks, rafts, and in a boat to be sure that we had safe and fun time in the water. Pond was one of my favorite quiet places at camp. The pond was a great place to find the marine animals we learned about. Oh, wow. 
here's another frog. As I sat there thinking about my first day at camp, I decided it was really great. And I wanted to come back again next year and maybe even stay for two weeks. How are you doing, Matt? Pretty good, Cal. Pretty good. Been a busy day, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Having fun so far? Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw you out canoeing today. Yeah, we went all around the bay. Yeah? You have fun? Yeah. Good. Huh, there's dinner, Bell. You hungry? Yeah, I'm starved. Well, let's go. Thank you.